All right, folks, welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. John McCain, who was in the previous two segments, was certainly one of the biggest interviews of 2014. Uh, to discuss some of the biggest stories of the year, I'm joined by Rick Unger, co-host of Steel and & Unger and senior political contributor for Forbes.com. Happy New Year. Pleasure. Happy holidays to you. All right. Well, I mean, we could start in a number of places, uh, but um, I, I, why don't we start with, um, you know, the president uh, and, and his executive orders, right. and I guess uh, most famously the threat of the immigration executive order, and finally the immigration executive order. And on immigration, we also had those kids coming across the border yeah, in Yeah, isn't mass. it amazing how fast that story's been forgotten? Well, it's been forgotten. The repercussions are being felt by towns and cities all over right. the country, but it's out of the news because the news cycle this year has been Unbelievable. tremendous. Unbelievable. Every week yeah. there's a new a new story that makes everybody forget about the previous weeks. But, but I mean, Obama, you know, Obama with his executive orders, and just a, a few days ago uh, it came to light, USA Today did a, a story, that not only is he issuing executive orders, but he's signing memorandums which right. are, have the same effect and when you combine the two, he's going to have issued more than any other president in, in history. That, that may turn out to be the case. You know, there's so many different levels of it. The problem is, is that we don't know, with, we haven't checked with other presidents to see if they've done similar things. We always get the executive order number. Well, USA Today it's, apparently it's, has. Maybe yeah. they did, and yeah. it's certainly possible that he will have. All right, so, so let's talk about uh, the, the uh, immigration uh, order um, that was signed. Uh, you know, it, it, it was funded in this uh, this. Uh, last budget bill, which right. was a disaster. But what's the future of that order? What do you think of the, rep the I, ramifications you, will be for the elections in 016, et cetera? You know that I've, I've consistently said that I think you have to look at this two ways. I think people make a mistake sometimes that could, because they conflate it. There is the legal question, was this constitutional? Right. And there's the political question. I am absolutely convinced that from a legal point of view, it's absolutely constitutional. It will pass constitutional muster. Uh, that's not going to be what is the ultimate issue and solution here. There are serious political questions. The thing that, that sticks in my brain, and, and I'm really surprised that we haven't heard much yet. We may start hearing it. You with can the see new a Congress. doctor for that, by the way. I can? Sticking in your yeah, brain. Yeah, You'll yeah, give me yeah, his name yeah. after the show. <laughs> I, you know, why hasn't Congress stepped up? to do something about it if they're so unhappy well, about it. That's my that's my question. Now, maybe it's the end of the year. Maybe they want to wait. But I have a funny feeling you're not going to see them do it because I don't think they want to touch it because of the 2016 election. Well, I think, uh, again, they're out of touch with the American people. Who, They'd rather complain than actually do anything. Well, the American anything. people don't want the executive order, and the Republicans get bad advice from bad advisors. They always have. Let's move on. Ebola. Yeah. We're both sitting here, and thank God we're both sitting here. And uh, apparently, although the media uh, reportedly agreed with the White House on depression not to report on any Ebola stories until someone actually got it. So we don't know how many people. We heard all reports of hundreds of people being under observation. Right. But as far as we know... One person. Yeah. One so, American. So it was... It was it and was didn't insane. catch it here. Caught yeah. it yeah, as a doctor. So in overseas. spite of ourselves, it seems well, like nobody caught it. I don't know if it is it. in spite of ourselves. I mean, what, what disappointed me about that story, obviously very serious... But I don't know why anybody th saw the need to politicize it. It wasn't a political story. It was important from a medical point of view, but I mean, it was shocking. Within three days, they're calling for the head of the CDC. Well, it was it political. Was ridiculous. It was political because the president and the CDC had said that uh, we, we can't uh, ban flights from Africa because we would harm the African right. economy. Right. He said we have to stop, uh, you know, we have to send soldiers over there to protect the African people. So they made it political and made it sound like they cared well, more about Africa than they cared about I, us. I don't think that's true. I don't think they ever cared more than they cared about us. And I think now that we have a little bit of distance, there's nothing like being able to look back to see who had it right. One American who is in Africa has died. I remember everybody complaining, what's going to happen to the soldiers? Well, we don't know what's there? going to happen to the soldiers. Well, yet. a lot of them are yeah. already back, and well, they're fine, thank God. Let's, let's hope that's um, the case. No yeah. Americans, except for the one doctor, have back. You know, Let, I, I hope you're it. right. I hope I, you're I, right. Listen, obviously, yeah, we hope I it hope doesn't return. Right. Absolutely. We overdid the story. All right. Uh, of course, um, ISIS is yeah, a, that's, a that's huge... That's going to be with us a long time. Going to be with us for a long time. I mean, to, you know, just the other day, they came out with a story about, you know, ISIS has I issued an edict with them or burn them or right. convert them or whatever. I mean, they, we haven't seen anything like this, a group like this doing this with an army to back them right. up. Right. Uh, I agree. I mean, this is one of the few places, as I think over our year together, we've agreed for the most part. Uh, ISIS, I view as a very, very, underlined very serious threat. I really do. 
Uh, I think it's only going to get worse before it gets better. You know, again, it's one of those situations where it remains to be seen if we took the right strategy, the right tact. Uh, as you know, I've disagreed with the president some on this. I might have done it a little bit differently. I, I think this aversion to boots on the ground based on Americans being tired is not a good reason not to put boots on the ground if that's what is called for. Yeah, and of course, so. uh, you know, we don't know what's going to be called right. for. And he, while he has definitively said no boots on the ground, he's also left the door open in well, other and, remarks. And we put some boots on the ground in <laughs> Yeah, reality. we do have boots on the ground. I, I think we have to take every one of these situations as they come. You know, you can learn the, the, the lessons of history, always a good idea. But every war is different. And, and particularly, as you know, I think a lot of our previous wars in the last number of years were mistaken wars. Why would I want to follow the directives of those if I thought they were wrong? You take them as they come. I seriously doubt we'll get through ISIS without having the boots on the All ground. right, let's talk about Donald Sterling. And, Do uh, we have to? Well, well, here's the deal. Here's how I want to put it in the context. This whole Sony thing, I think right. you and I might agree, even though it just happened, might be the biggest story. Uh, of all, in one sense, but they're all they're all right. big because if we're going to succumb to su succumb to blackmail, right. uh, you know, if this was a Muslim group who threatened this, we'd all be on the war path. Right. It's it's some group backed by North Korea, probably China, and they've stopped a movie from being released. I mean, this is incredible. But is. the email I want to speak to the emails that were released. The president of the st uh, studio from Sony, she said that Obama would get, probably going to see all these and name these black movies with black actors. Right. And I've heard Oprah, I've heard others say, oh, we can't judge her. You know, she's in the privacy of her own home. She didn't know anybody was going to read those. Donald Sterling didn't know he was being recorded. He was in his own home. So what's the difference? Yeah, you know, I can see where you can draw some lines there. I think they're very different in the sense that, number one, everybody in the NBA has been trying to get rid of Donald Sterling for a long time. He's an absolutely, or was, an absolutely horrendous owner. And the difference is... He hired all black his, coach, black general say, manager, all of played his players black players were black, yeah. and, and he put himself in a position where he could no longer relate to them. But he did a lot but, for black but people. But let's be honest. Yeah. The real reason, they've been trying to get rid of him in the all NBA right, so it's a double a standard time. and it's a bunch of nonsense. I don't know. I, you know, you may see Amy Pascal to go, so it may not be a double standard. But, but Oprah this. and Don Lemon didn't say about uh, Donald Sterling, oh, you know, he I'm didn't, a little know, surprised he didn't Oprah. know he was good. Yeah, yeah. I was shocked. I yeah. played it. All right, we're going to come back with more from Rick Unger. We have a lot more that happened this year. Believe it or not, it didn't all end there. We're going to uh, cover it in two minutes. Yes, on the, the Steve Allsberg Show. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy.